I was really struck by a paragraph I read that um, I think it was in your book about how even at 60 or 70 years old, a few simple lifestyle changes with patients or, or with the public has been shown to increase their performance on cognitive tests. And I think that's really empowering for people yeah. when they think, oh, well, I didn't do this. I've had a stressful life. Yeah. Wait a minute. There are still things you can it's do. It's not too late. So let's go through what are some of the things that people can do, whether it's their diet, whether it's, you know, whatever. You, you, you go through some of the tips that you think are useful. And I thought about how to explain that so it's not too much of a listicle for people. And just, let's do a 24-hour day. So first of all, food. Consider skipping breakfast a couple of times a week. In neuroscience journals... And from what we know about the biology of it, that intermittent fasting, going 16 hours a couple of times a week without eating glucose, will, your liver will run out of its glucose reserves. It'll burn fat into these things called ketones. The brain is a hybrid vehicle. It's not all gas. It's not all electric. It likes both. And so if you have dinner at 8 and it's Monday evening, consider having... Uh, your next meal be midday the next day. That's an easy way to get to 16 hours. It doesn't mean you're fasting for days and days. There is neuroscientific literature that intermittent fasting is good for attention and focus. Okay, now it's lunchtime and you're thinking about what to eat. Before that, I would consider taking five minutes um, to just breathe deeply like you're doing now. Just bake deep breaths a couple of times a day, three times a day for three minutes. Make it easy. See how that works for you. Just the pause might be helpful. Now it's time to eat. The food you choose is important. And I, there's delicious food to eat that's actually good for your brain. And how do I know that? Well, we don't have a pill for Alzheimer's, but we do have the mind diet, which is essentially Mediterranean food um, that if you look at a group of thousands of people over a long period of time, they had less dementia. Choose plants, choose nuts, choose occasional fatty fish. The fatty fish has omega-3s, which is an essential component of your, of, of your brain. It's the wrapping around all those connections that keeps those electrical signals firing faster. So now you're at lunchtime, you've chosen the Mediterranean diet, more plants, less meat, the right kind of meat. And your day goes on. And then the question is, what's next to improve your health? A bit of exercise is great. The brain likes exercise because it is flesh. Don't, don't clog the plumbing to your garden because swaths of your garden will wither. So people have strokes and injuries. It's because blood flow is not getting into their brain. That's the way to hurt the structure of your brain. So what's good for the heart is good for the brain. Then the other thing it does is it bathes itself in these uh, neurotrophic factors. That's what my science is on, BDNF, brain okay. drive. And so that's what my grants are on. When the brain exercises, it showers itself. It's not like thigh muscles release uh, healthy brain chemicals that swim up there. It's got its own pharmacy. You give it the right behavior and interaction, it'll reward itself. So exercise keeps the plumbing open to the flesh of the brain, as well as releases molecules that serve as miracle, miracle growth for the brain. A couple of times a week is a good place to start. So these are simple things. These are free things. So exercise, and then the day, the day moves on, and you're getting to the evening. Uh, if you can, I like to read something completely unfamiliar. I've got a stack of old magazines. I just flip through, just, just new, new content for your mind. And I think... It's since it's thinking flesh, and of course it likes blood, it likes to be irrigated. Of course it likes a certain kind of diet because of the components it needs, but it also wants to think. If you ask Usain Bolt, I mean, how do you get your thigh muscles stronger? It's to take some stairs. Well, how do you get your brain to be healthier? Think. And everybody's level, next level of thought and challenge is individual. We don't all have to do the same puzzles. We don't all have to have the same career, but... Get out of your comfort zone, if you will, just with the thoughts. So flip through something different on your phone. Read something different on your phone. Develop a new habit. I think that's important.